This is my survival means automation game from one year ago. And this is a real playtest. One of our playtesters wandered around aimlessly for 20 minutes trying to find this. He walked past it four separate times. Why? Was it because he's stupid? No, well, maybe a little bit, but mostly because our tutorial sucked. And if you're anything like me, you're short and have a weird relationship with avocados. They don't taste like anything, but they're still delicious. But you also hate frustrating tutorials. But luckily for us, fixing it was easy peasy. It took us no time at all. Atrio is a survival means automation game where you capture creatures and add them into your assembly line. And we're currently the 624th most wishlisted game on Steam. We're trying to break that top 500, so go wishlist the game. So, you want to make a terrible tutorial? You're in the right place. The first step is to not have one. Just drop them off in your world with no context and watch them suffer. What is this box? What does emergency mode mean? What am I supposed to do? Who am I? How do I move? All the basic fundamental questions that you should answer, you don't. Now, I've invited a very experienced UX researcher and a good friend of mine, Graham McAllister, to help explain what not to do when making a tutorial. He's the founder of a games UX research studio and formerly worked as part of the Google Experts group giving UX advice to startups. Hello. So, Graham, from a tutorial's perspective, I'm going to need you to rate the game. A C minus. What? Uh, um, moving on, step two, don't give clear objectives. So when it comes to designing good game objectives, there are at least three components we want to consider. The first one is a clear goal. What do you want me to do? I'm so confused. The second part is linked to purpose or motivation. Why is that important? I don't care about this box. If the player knows that, then they're more likely to remember it and pay more, more attention. The third and final component is feedback. How are they doing? Are they close? Are they far away? Are they doing it correctly or incorrectly? Feedback is arguably the most important step. So here's what we did. We replaced an emergency mode with an objective and an icon. Impossible to miss. Next, we added an intro scene, stolen from a trailer, and some dialogue showing it's a post-apocalyptic world near this character trying to turn the lights back on. But nothing was skippable. Bonus step, make nothing skippable. Oh, why can't I skip this? Yeah, don't worry. We made everything skippable. And finally, we added a task list that updates when you complete objectives. But when they go to find Blood Ore, we hit you with a second objective, and now we're trying to force them to learn way too many concepts all at the same time. Step four, force them to learn way too many concepts all at the same time. So we have you go find Blood Rock, which is easy enough, until we divert your attention with a separate task. And now, you have to upgrade your mining device, go to the menu, find the right ingredient, craft it, get a sick animation, get the mining device, harvest the rock, go back, craft the rock, and then you're done your task. Which, <laughs> it's not great. So scaffolding is a learning technique. So instead of telling them everything they need to know and hoping they can digest that all at once, and we introduce these one at a time to the player and give them feedback on how they're using them. You may want to contrast this with what some game designers do, where they just dump all the information on the player at once and out of context and hope the player can remember that and use it at the right time. Now obviously, Stephen and his team would never take such an approach to the tutorial of Atrio. We'll fix it. But first, do you want to play the game? Of course you do! The demo of the game is available to anybody who goes to istoinc.com, clicks on this link, and enters their email address. You also get access to the lore in form of really short, super funny emails, and I've spent a ton of time making sure they're really funny and really entertaining. Highly recommend. Go sign up. So many, many months have passed, and now we've introduced a ton of new features, including a task list that helps break out the steps, a countdown timer that everybody loved. It's a core timer. Well, be an I don't like it. Time. Time. Get out. Get out. <laughs> a refuel module, unlocking recipes, and much, much more. And to introduce each of these features, we had the bright idea that they would appear when you complete an objective. But it ended up being so overwhelming that nobody got it. So pro tip, if you really want to ruin your tutorial, add lots of visual overload. Hey, Dad! What? Come here! I want you to look at the screen and tell me what to do next, okay? Okay. I don't know what's going on. Nice. So to fix this, we greatly reduced the visual overload with a couple of key changes. First, we completely overhauled the UI experience. Players now get to control the pacing. Also, look at these slick animations. Mwah! When they're ready to move on and receive the information, they can hit the next button. We also added an amazing plugin animation. Mwah. This helps establish context. And lastly, you get the updated tasks. But we still had some work to do because players were still super confused because we had unintentionally completely avoided affordance. Humans are really good at understanding patterns. 
If they see a fire, they'll understand it to be used for cooking or for warming up. If an item looks like an axe or has the word axe in it, they can guess it's for chopping wood or for fighting. Making it clear how an object can be used is called affordance. <laughs> yeah, we didn't do like any of that. Look at all. Look at this. Look at it. It's just a box. And this is another box. And another box. And a box on top of another box. Nothing I designed looked like real world objects, so you just had no idea what each of them did. So I did a big redesign. The refuel module, I turned it into the fuel depot and changed it to look like a giant battery. And you could see the fuel depot draining, so it's always apparent what state it's in. The heart box now has little valves that fill each time you do a minor upgrade so you can see how close you are to completing a major upgrade. The item finder looks like an eyeball that looks around when it's finding stuff. The scrap chest looks like a chest and has a little indicator that fills up when you're almost full. And the factory... Uh, <laughs> Well, the factory still looks like a box, but at least it shows the icon of whatever item you selected and shows the progress of crafting. And that concludes the six steps on how to not make a tutorial. And it's been quite the year going from this to this. And so Graham, I want you to rate the game again. And this time you can still be honest. How do we do? So the team really have been making great progress over the last year on the tutorial. They've been listening to player feedback and really trying to remove any potential friction points uh, in the Atrio onboarding experience. So overall, I think the Atrio tutorial is worth a C-. Come